When I turned 17, I went to the doctor because things weren't developing normally. I still hadn't started my period. I still didn't have boobs. I was referred up the chain of specialists, and we set out to find what was wrong with me. This was the first time in a medical setting that I felt like a thing to be fixed. The doctors ordered some tests, and when they got the results back, they said, well, we didn't expect that, which I think is right next to oops on the list of things you don't want to hear in a doctor's office. A quick biology refresher for you. Women have two X chromosomes, and men have an X and a Y, right? Well, usually. The doctors were confused because when my chromosome analysis came back, I had an X and a Y, which is typically associated with being male. I was intersex, somewhere between the sexes. Intersex people have some combination of both male and female, whether that's in their external anatomy, their internal reproductive organs, their hormone levels, or their DNA. Intersex also includes people who don't have any particular aspect of the opposite sex, but their anatomy just isn't quite typical for what you would expect. Being intersex is not the same as being transgender. Transgender people typically have bodies that correspond entirely to one sex. While it is possible to be both intersex and transgender, the majority of each group is either one or the other. People find out that they're intersex in a few ways. Some people find out, well, their parents and their doctors find out when they're babies and they notice that their anatomy just isn't quite typical. Other people find out during puberty, when puberty goes in ways that they didn't expect, or as in my case, when puberty just doesn't happen at all. So once we knew, quote unquote, what was wrong with me, it became a thing to be fixed. We had our game plan. I had streak gonads, tiny little streaks of tissue that would normally have developed into ovaries in women or testes in men, but in me never developed into anything. Those might be cancerous, so I would have to have surgery to remove them. If they were cancerous and the cancer had spread, then I might need more surgery, and maybe chemo, and maybe an oncology team. During surgery, we would also evaluate what female anatomy I had and whether it was all hooked up. If I had a uterus, we needed to know that it wasn't off in its own little world, because hormone replacement therapy could stimulate a period and the blood would have nowhere to go. At the end of the day, a few prognoses were tossed out. I would probably never be pregnant, I might never have a normal sex life, and by the time all of the diagnostics were done, I would be 18. Now, I know that starting puberty was really high on everyone's list of things to do when they turned 18, <laughs> but I'm happy to report that everything turned out well, including my moderately awkward freshman year of college, I didn't have cancer, I can probably be pregnant with the help of an egg donor, and my sex life is none of your business. <laughs> Our game plan had gone perfectly. According to any medical standard, I was fixed. But fixing is different than healing. And healing rarely comes with a roadmap. I think it's indicative of a fixing mentality that I was never referred to counseling, I was never referred to group counseling, and it was never suggested that I could meet people like me. Imagine being told at 17 that you have red hair. And you're like, red hair? What's that? That sounds ridiculous. But at 1% to 2% of the population worldwide, being intersex is about as common as having red hair. In the United States, it's also about as common as being Jewish. So where are we? And how have so many people never heard of us? It still astonishes me that in several years of being out as an intersex person, 
I have never met another intersex person naturally on the street, in the wild. <laughs> Even in the LGBT community, nobody's ever said, oh yeah, me too, or my sister, my friend is. In our personal, professional, and public lives, we are deep underground. We've been ashamed of it, so we don't talk about it, so we become ashamed of it, and the cycle continues. But we can't be invisible anymore. We need to be seen, and we need you to know that we exist, because otherwise the next generation of intersex kids is going to grow up just as confused and ashamed as we did. We need people to know that if intersex people are 1% of every population, then there may be five intersex Fortune 500 CEOs, there may be five intersex members of Congress, there may be three intersex United States astronauts, and there may be four intersex kids in the average US elementary school. We need to be seen, and we need everyone's voices, because the consequences of us not being seen are dire. Across the United States and around the world, intersex babies have been subjected to what has been called genital mutilation. I worry that that term stigmatizes intersex people, but I do think it conveys the gravity of the situation. Intersex babies are being subjected to surgery that is cosmetic and medically not necessary, and is designed to make their genitals appear more normal. These surgeries carry risks of scarring, loss of sensation, and sexual difficulties later on. What's really surprising is that relatively minor abnormalities can bring infants under the knife. In a condition called hypospadias, a boy's penis has an under-opening instead of a tip opening. The term comes from the Greek hypo for under and spadia for opening. Instead of being at the tip, the urethra is on the underside of the penis somewhere lower down. These boys generally have a functioning penis, so why are they being subjected to surgery? Well, so that when they are older, they can stand while peeing, so that their penis doesn't look weird. Imagine a set of parents seeing their new baby and saying, those ears have got to go. The doctors would look at them like they were nuts. But for some reason, when the abnormality is in a baby's genitals, surgery seems like the only option. Hypospadias affects one in 200 boys, which makes it relatively common. Even so, we don't have good data on the number of procedures performed. We also don't have good data on the success or failure rates of these surgeries. Failure rates seem to range between 4% and 67%, depending on the type of procedure performed and the type of surgeon performing the surgery. That's a huge range. I would argue that any risk is too great when the procedure is purely cosmetic and the child is too young to participate in the decision making, especially because failure means more surgery. Kids have ended up having 10, 20, 25 surgeries to correct what went wrong in the first one and in subsequent surgeries. They've ended up spending spring break and summer at home recuperating instead of having fun with their friends. And for what? I honestly believe that parents and physicians want to do right by these kids. It's impossible to know the particulars of every case, but I do know the physics of judgment. I know that when we're treating other people as things to be fixed, we're probably treating ourselves the same way. When we think that we're not good enough, we think that other people aren't good enough. And then we start thinking that other people see other people as not good enough. And that spirals into worries of people seeing this child as not good enough, wondering if this kid will be teased, wondering what will happen when a babysitter changes their diaper, wondering what will happen when a colleague notices that this man pees sitting down, or when a partner sees this woman slightly enlarged clitoris for the first time. These fears are real, and I have faced similar ones in my own life. 
But we are miracles made up of particles smaller than we can conceive of, from stars larger than we can possibly imagine. And we don't have to get caught up in the in-between spaces of inches and pounds. We can remember that all of us, male, female, intersex, are not things to be fixed. We are people to be loved. And if you believe that you're a person to be loved and treat yourself with kindness and patience, then you'll treat other people the same way. And that's what intersex people really need because decisions about our bodies are being made by people like you. Thank you.